Hello, Internet! I'm Ellie the Purpler Doofus, and welcome to Buddy Reads, where I read a small select of a book and review it for you. Today we are covering chapters 33 through 40 of Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. I hope you've read up to that point yourself because I do not want to ruin anything for you. Today's section starts off with Kavoth and his friends enacting a plan to get back at Ambrose. And it's more a plan to get Dinah's ring back and get back Kavos' blood so that Ambrose can't use it on him anymore. And the plan goes like this. They have Fella, and she dresses up very nice and pretty, and she is to seduce Ambrose into going on a date with her. And Fella's like, oh, I hate that bastard. But I'll do it for you, Kavoth. I kind of hate how every character is just kind of like, yeah, but you're a good guy, Kavoth. <laughs> you just can't do wrong, Kavoth. Uh... Fella goes out on a date with him and distracts him. Kavoth is in the the lobby of the inn that Ambrose is staying at, and he's playing cards with Sim and Will. And all of a sudden, someone screams, FIRE! And everyone's like running away. And Kavoth is running towards the fire. Because what Kavoth has done, he has coated his arms in the mixture that I was talking telling you about last video, the alchemy mixture that's like protection against fire. And he's been instructed not to touch his eyes or anything. So like the whole time that he's playing cards, he's like, eh, oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I mean, oh no, shouldn't, but it really exists. And Kvothe goes up to the bedroom. There's a fire blazing and he goes around madly searching for the ring, knowing that Ambrose is not in there. He can't find the ring. He can't find the blood. But what he does find is a receipt for the ring. And Kvothe is so mad about this that he kicks over Ambrose's chamber pot and it spills all over the Ambrose's floor. It's just kind of like a petty thing that he does. Kavoth goes down to his friends after all of this in the forest. Before this plan was even began, Fella brought Devi because Devi is Fella's friend. And there's that awkward tenseness between Devi and Kavoth. And Devi even says, I'm not doing this, you know, for you. I'm doing this for Fella. And I'm doing this for all the other women that Ambrose has screwed over. You are not a part of this to me. And it's really kind of sad because Debbie and Kvothe used to like have a great relationship and this just kind of breaks it. He goes down and they're all conferring with their stories and they say, did you find the ring? Did you find the ring? And Kvothe's like, I didn't find the ring, but I did find a receipt, which means that that bastard pawned the ring. And everyone's like, oh, that jerk. And so Kvothe goes around and he is looking for the pawn shop that this receipt belongs to and he eventually finds it and when he finds it and he plans to buy back the ring he also sees a bunch of other stuff that Denny used to own and I can't remember what it was. I think it was just a, a jewel, a stone of some kind and Kvothe is looking at it and he's like that could give you like a lot of money probably the exact amount of money that it might cost to buy a new loot case. And it just kind of clicks for Kavot that Dina pawned that to buy a loot case for him. <sighs> and it kind of breaks Kavot's heart. It kind of breaks mine too because Kavot isn't strong enough, man enough, he isn't uh, he isn't mindful enough to realize that Dina was really into him and he could totally have her. He's really into her. He should just say something, but he just doesn't have the courage to. Kvothe buys the ring. He's walking around town a little bit later and he hears this voice. Kvothe! And he's like, what the hell is going on? I know that voice from somewhere. Where is that voice coming from? I, who has that voice? And he looks and it's this girl. This girl is a girl that he met before. This girl is a girl that he talked to before about finding Chandrian in the first book. So she used to dream about this vase or vase or whatever you want to call it that had a painting on it that told the story of the Chandrian and she dreamed another third of the painting and she painted it out for him and she handed it to him and he's like looking at it and he's like but there's eight characters on here and I know the Chandrian only travel in seven so who's this eighth guy and she's like I don't know 
And he's like, weird. You also find out that this is the same woman that was going to the university and talking about Kavoth selling charms. And Kavoth kind of kicks himself because he blamed Ambrose for besmirching his name using a tactic. But what it really was was he had given her something and said, this will give you the power to sleep when it really wasn't anything. So she was a crying girl and he feels a bit bad about that. And I'm like, yes, Chandrian stuff. Yes, more Chandrian stuff. Please, more Chandrian stuff. <sighs> no more Chandrian stuff. Kaboth goes with his friend, goes out with his friends, and they're drinking, and they end up drunk and hungover in the woods. Kaboth tells his friends about his life as a traveler, as a sideshow traveler. And they're like, hey, don't you know a lot of stories? And Kaboth is like, yeah. And they're like, why don't you tell us a story? We are tired and drunk and don't want to use our brain. So you tell us a story. And Kavoth tells him this story about a beggar man who gets picked up by travelers. It doesn't really go anywhere. He finishes the story and his friends are like, well, that was kind of dull. And he's like, that's not really the kind of story that you tell audiences. That's the kind of story that you tell your friends. And they're like, thank you. You? And then his friends say, but there was that part about the, the emir, the, the army that the homeless man ran into. And Kabbalah was like, yeah. And they're like, didn't you say in the story that they were connected to the Christians? And he's like, yeah, they were. And they're like, no. They weren't. And so it becomes like this argument between Kavoth and I believe it was Sim. And they argue over it so much that Will is like trying to be the mediator of this. And they have to go to the archives to actually look this up. Because, well, that's what you do when you have an argument is you look it up. They find many, many, many facts about the Amir. But they all kind of contradict each other. One says that they do, and the other one says that they don't. One says that they did, and the other one says that they didn't. And it's just kind of like, oh, when is this going to stop? Will says, I don't think I'm the right person to judge this contest. And Sim is like, what do you mean? And Will says, I think you know exactly what I mean. I think you know exactly who we need to go to. And Sim is like, oh no, not him. Will's like, yeah, we gotta go to, we gotta go to Puppet. And I'm like, yes! We finally get to meet Puppet! And so they go to Puppet's place. Puppet opens the door and he's got his hood and he's like, hello. Could, could we try that again? And he like closes the door on them and he's like, <laughs> they knock again and he opens up the door. He's like, hello. And he's got like the hood perfectly. And it's just like, Puppet's a dork, and it's awesome! Puppet invites them in, and they sit down to talk about the Emir, and Kaboth is, like, really confused as to why these two haven't introduced the, him to Puppet yet. Puppet eventually sides with Kaboth, but ultimately says that he would really, really need more facts and more research to figure out the true answer. And that's pretty much where the section ends. I kind of adore Puppet. <laughs> And I kind of wish that we had seen more of Puppet. We haven't yet. I mean, this is the first meeting. We should see more of him. If you like what I'm doing, go ahead and click the subscribe button. If you like this video specifically, go ahead and click the like button. And go ahead and leave a comment letting me know your favorite character in the book so far. I've been Elliot the Purple Air Diffus. This has been Buddy Reads, reminding you to watch the camera it is. And I will see you all in the next section of Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Ruffus. Turtles!